welcome back. In this video, I will be attempting to finish this sketchbook that I have had for a year now. I started it on June 15th in 2022, and I've kind of just been working on and off in it. I was very good at keeping up with it at the beginning, but then I kind of just stopped um, working in it because of all the schoolwork and all kinds of projects that I was doing throughout the year. So I think the last Last time I worked in it was probably around December of 2022. Um, so I kind of just wanted to pick it up again because I really want to finish it and start a new sketchbook that um, is a little better material. Like I'm not gonna lie, this is not the best sketchbook that I've ever had. But I don't just want to leave it alone because it has pretty good drawings in it and my family is also going to a cabin in Georgia for a whole week so I thought what a perfect opportunity to just draw every single day and finish this bad boy up. So my goal is to draw two spreads a day because there is nine and a half pages left in this so I feel like if I do two spreads I should be able to finish it within a week um, and if not I might gonna like put some extra days on there because I really do want this done and I guess we'll see how successful I will be at drawing every single day um, I definitely haven't been sketchbooking a lot lately so <laughs> this is gonna be, be a bit of a challenge because I'm also gonna be using tools that I haven't really like used on a regular basis but that's what sketchbooks are for is for experimentation and kind of just letting myself draw whatever comes to mind and not really have super high expectations of myself and i also want to kind of create a list of things for myself just so i have ideas to go off of and not get stuck on certain days because i have no idea what i want to draw so i'm definitely gonna start by making a list and then once that list is done i can just go off of it it's not really like a oh day one is gonna be this day two is gonna be this it's like just a list of things and whatever i feel like drawing that day is gonna be the thing um there's definitely gonna be new stuff I'm gonna come up with while I'm in the cabin like it's gonna be a very inspirational environment like there's gonna be nature everywhere so yeah I hope you enjoy this video grab a snack or grab your sketchbook and work with me if you'd like and I'll be back when this is going to be finished Okay, first day of this challenge. Um, it started out pretty strong. I was able to end up getting a page and a half done. I was feeling pretty pumped and inspired. The cabin ended up being super cool and there was a porch area upstairs because um, it had like two floors and I sat there pretty much every day it had a screen so there were like no bugs which was very nice um, the light was semi-decent it wasn't super bright because there were we were literally in the middle of the forest but it was a very cozy vibe and I think there was enough light to you know film and everything so for this first half spread i wanted to continue kind of where i left off which was during winter time and yeah i know like during a winter scene during summer is not super appropriate but <laughs> i just wanted to keep going with what i had before and match up the colors with the other side which I ended up being able to do that and yeah lol if you're watching like you can see that I'm struggling with the paint because this paper soaks up the water so quickly it was really bad like layering was not very easy with this paper for some reason I don't know if this sketchbook is just not for painting i do think it was supposed to be like a mixed media sketchbook but i don't think it actually is i think it's for like pencil or dry media but i still kept going and i still kept using the paints even though i was really struggling it's just painting is so much easier for me than 
anything else like it's just easier to lay down colors i have a wider variety of colors than just markers or pencils where i'm kind of limited or i have to really be cautious of what i'm putting down because you cannot really layer markers while with gouache like you can kind of just keep adding and adding on top of everything that's kind of why i kept using the paint even though the paper didn't really like it <laughs> I also didn't really have much of a choice because I only brought a certain amount of art supplies so I didn't want to limit myself even more by not using paint. I kind of just ended up struggling with painting in the sketchbook in the end which is fine. You live and you learn. Some sketchbooks just cannot handle it and that's okay. But yeah, so this half page is done. I really like it i'm glad i was able to match up the colors um for both sides and then the spread this way like became very cohesive and um it's very wintry but also it has like kind of all seasons now that i'm looking at it the other side kind of looks like it has like all four seasons which is kind of cool For the next spread, I wanted to fill it with all kinds of animals, both kind of semi-realistic to practice and then stylized on the other side. So for the left side, I did solely studies and the right side was for experimentation and kind of just having fun um, because I like to kind of switch things up in my sketchbooks between doing serious stuff where I'm kind of practicing and studying certain things such as like animals or hands or objects and then also have fun little doodles in there that are just kind of silly or more of like my own style because that's what I enjoy doing like I like doing studies they are fine but I'm not doing them because like it's my favorite thing to do. Like I do them because I do have to practice, I do have to learn anatomy, I do have to learn how to draw certain things that I'm not really comfortable with, but also if that's all I would do in a sketchbook that would kind of make me miserable <laughs> because I do like doing my own drawings and my own style and I do think that's also something you have to practice and you have to keep doing it because then you kind of just like lose your own artistic style if you also don't keep practicing that so I think finding a balance in your sketchbook is very important and I definitely think I was able to achieve that in this specific sketchbook where even like the studies i was still able to implement like colors that made it a little bit more fun or adding like a color to the background so it's not just like a plain white background with the studies also helps with making these realistic looking sketchy pages a little bit fit in with my other stuff so i think there's many ways for you to still make these studies that are might not be your favorite but still incorporate your own little style in there or connect it with your other work like i definitely think this spread was able to successfully do that that even though one side obviously has more of like realistic looking animals and then the other side is like completely cartoony stylized little creatures and and it still looks you know like a cohesive spread so i think going with the colors and maybe the same type of like art materials can really help like put the two together and you can still at the same time do studies that are for you to practice and then the other side could implement your own artistic style so everything that you have learned on one side could be used on the other side when you're doing like your own style so i think both needs to happen but also everybody 
uses their sketchbook in a different way. So um, all of this is my opinion and all of this is just like how I use my own sketchbook. So this is not really like any guide to how to use a sketchbook. This is just the way that I do it because I know I have to push myself to do these studies and practice because I would just do my own little doodles and do my own little style and then kind of not grow as an artist because I would just get stuck doing the same thing over and over again. So I do think these principles are very important to learn, but also have fun in your sketchbook. Don't just do like the studies because you feel like you have to do them. The second day was a lot tougher than the first one because I was very exhausted and was feeling a little under the weather. So I ended up only finishing half a page, which I decided to go for a medieval slash lady night aesthetic. And I did this princess looking figure with branches around her. I just really liked the pose and, you know, the corset was really cool. And also my goal was to kind of do more semi-realistic portraits. So I definitely feel like this page achieved that. Next to her, I did a lady night, which honestly turned out really nice. I'm very happy with the outcome for that one. The pen I decided to use for this spread is this ballpoint pen that is one of my favorites. It's literally just a regular pen that I got from my previous job. They were tossing a bunch of these out because my boss didn't really like them because they had these fire department numbers on them and she was saying like oh we shouldn't use these anymore so just toss them out and i just took a bunch of them and the reason why i really like them is because they are so smooth and buttery on the page like it just glides so nicely on any type of paper and honestly it is great for sketching like you don't even really need like pencil drawings underneath it because it kind of feels and reacts as like a pencil so you can like layer it and you can also have like thinner lines that are like not as dark so i just really like this pen and i think that's why i was having an easier time with this page too because the pen was just very forgiving i did end up doing like an under sketch with red pencil just because this is my pretty quote-unquote pretty sketchbook and I want to have these pages look really nice. I did want it to have a little sketch underneath it and then work on top of it but again I could have just done the pen and not worry about you know doing another sketch underneath it and it still would have looked fine. And at the very end, I added this Florence and the Machine quote um, that I thought was fitting. I do believe I ended up doing like a lyric from her song, King. For the other side, kind of matching up the vibes, I wanted to use markers. So I went with this scene from Mirror Mirror showing Lily Collins in her iconic yellow hood and her dress, which is kind of like peeking out. This I absolutely adore this movie so much, specifically the custom design. Like every piece of clothing in that movie is so intricate and plays a very important and crucial role in the movie. And I just love when movie makers do that. And just the colors are absolutely amazing. Everything is super vibrant. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen this movie. It has Lily Collins, Julie Roberts, and many amazing actors in it. So if you haven't seen it, please watch it. 
for the process of this drying i was a little bit skeptical because i don't really use markers this way so i usually just use like one layer of marker and then i just work with colored pencil on top of it so i don't really like shade with markers and this time i did and i am very satisfied with the outcome because i was a little bit worried when i was working on it that like oh shoot i'm putting all these colors down and like what are they gonna look at the very end but i think all of it came together very nicely and i am just very happy that i pushed myself to work with a media that i'm not super comfortable with and a media that is not very forgiving like once you put a marker down it's not gonna it's not gonna go anywhere after that like you cannot overlay it like gouache or acrylic you cannot really do anything with it you can like kind of fix it with like colored pencils but yeah so it's a hard media like i i really think people who work with markers on a regular basis are like champs because i i have a really hard time working with them and yeah so i am very happy with how this turned out i think it turned out really cute So I believe this is day three here and again because the second day was so rough I ended up having to do a lot of catch up on this day because I wanted to get myself back on track of where I wanted to be with this challenge. The place we stayed at for the cabin was near this town called LJ which was uh, a place that we ended up going and visiting and it was a very cute little place there was a waterfall nearby that we visited and it was so gorgeous the nature was just absolutely fantastic so i definitely wanted to commemorate these little memories and snippets in my sketchbook one side i did this landscape painting of the waterfall it's kind of like looking down onto the waterfall so you can kind of just see the hills and the greenery that's overlooking the the waterfall and for the other side i added these little moments that reminded me of this trip which was getting peach apple cider from this farm nearby and there were so many deers near the cabin like we saw like at least 10 deers per day like near just walking around and there was this one deer that came up straight to our cabin and we gave it like i think we gave it apples or something like that and then i think i think there were like chicken and roosters in lj that i thought was just fantastic that they were just walking around again <laughs> with the waterfall page i was struggling with the paint because i was trying to cover up the mirror mirror spread which was just showing through so bad like the yellow was very overpowering and it was just with the paper not taking up the water and the paint not being thick enough it just was not covering it at all and I also think there is not as big of a contrast in the leaves in the waterfall piece because I realized I didn't have black paint. So I was kind of mixing this dark blue with dark brown and I was just trying to create this darker color and it was just not working. Like I definitely needed a little bit more pigmented black for it to create a better contrast. But overall, it was a good practice. The watercolor page, like the LJ page, turned out very pretty. I definitely want to do more pieces like that where it's kind of like softer watercolor and I don't use anything else other than the paint itself.
Like I said at the beginning, I wrote up some prompts to keep myself inspired whenever I felt like I had no idea what to draw. And one of these prompts were a clown and I knew I had to do a whole spread for them. So I have a variety of clowns here from silly original characters to a study and even a little Scandinavian family clown. So I do own a couple of clown dolls myself, which probably makes me a little weird, but I don't care. I think they're very cute and I tend to customize them. Like I like to take the paint off of their faces and kind of draw my own little faces on them. And my best friend actually got me into the clown craze when it first came out um, because he has his own collection. I think he has like a whole shrine of clowns. He has a bigger collection than I do. But yeah, I just think they are like funky little dudes and I like the costuming of them, especially these like very vintage antique uh, clown dolls. I really just wanted to do something silly for this spread and I think this worked out perfectly. I also was experimenting with drawing a portrait with only pencils, which I got the inspiration from Chris Hong, who is an amazing artist. And she had this video on Instagram, I think it was like a short reel, where she explained how she creates her pencil portraits. And it's kind of like laying down the shadows first and the values. So like she uses these green pencils to put down where her, sh her darkest shadows are going to be and then just work on top of it, which is actually a method that I learned in drawing class when we did our pastel painting. So it's a very similar process. And it was so interesting to do it with Prismacolors because I never thought that you could do this with Prismacolors. Because I know people use it for like oil paintings and pastel paintings. So I understood that you could like use it for those materials that kind of like, you know, like you can layer a little bit better and also you like blend it a little bit more. I don't know how to explain it, but I just, it was so fascinating to do it with the pencils. And I think this is a great way to learn this process if you want to get into pastel paintings, like if you just want to do something that is not as messy as pastel paintings or not as expensive as like oil painting and then you can see if like you like this method and if it works for you so i highly recommend her tutorial videos because they're so interesting and the way that she uses color is just amazing so i highly recommend her work
I think we're on day four now and we are back to painting because I love to suffer. Same deal as last time, I had these pages pre-drawn before sitting down and filming and I was also going back and forth between the two pages just so while the paint was drying I can work on the other page with painting. I decided to go for this farmer's market slash produce aisle at the supermarket vibes. So I have some fishes and vegetables with a little broccoli guy and the gouache on this one turned out so good. Like it has a flat element to it that I love about this paint and the colors are just vibrant. Yeah, this is just how I want all of my gouache painting to turn out and the others didn't really turn out how I wanted them to but this one is just really hitting the spot. I just really enjoyed the process of painting these and I definitely want to draw more vegetable people in the future. I have done this other piece before with this broccoli guy um, where I think I drew a mushroom and I think it was a bok choy. Yeah, I think it was a bok choy. And I have been doing like a bunch of different fruits and vegetable people. And I really want to expand on that. Like I love this graphic novel called Garlic and Vampire. It's about these vegetable people and specifically this garlic girl who goes and tries to like conquer her fear of the vampire and they end up becoming friends and it's so cute and charming. I highly recommend it if you can buy it or read it online or get it from the library. It's absolutely amazing and the art style is very cute too and just the storytelling is amazing. So I'm kind of hoping I can do something with these characters and create a a very nice little story for kids to enjoy and kind of like fall in love with vegetables in a sense because um, I just think like they're so colorful and there's just so many things you can do with them like they they live in like a vegetable garden and or you know there's like a farmer who is like raising them or something I don't know I just think it's such a cute idea um, so I definitely want to do something with that This next spread ended up being the last one that I did at the cabin, which most of it I didn't even film because it was getting so hot on the porch. Like the beginning of the week was actually pretty nice and almost chilly. So it was very nice to sit outside and draw, but at this point, like it was getting really hot and really humid. So I couldn't sit out there for a long period of time and there was no light inside the cabin so i couldn't film anywhere else so this is going to be like kind of a shorter clip i did these hand studies on one side and then the other side i have shoes which the shoe side was just like a funky posca drying the hands were done with the same pen i was using for the medieval page and i'm actually really proud of these i think they turned out pretty nice uh, it was definitely a good practice because I am not great at drawing hands. So it's definitely something I need to practice and work on. And this was the perfect opportunity. And same with the shoes. I am not like amazing at drawing shoes. So I definitely need to keep working on that. But this was just like a fun, simple spread with very limited colors. Because I only have, I think, like five Posca pens in total. Um, I really love them. I think they have such fun colors and it's just like really making you come out of your comfort zone in terms of like the color palette. 
So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this front too. I think it turned out pretty cute. Alrighty, and we are back home and we are doing a Barbie spread. After watching the Barbie movie, I knew I had to do a spread dedicated to it because it is so amazing and I really enjoyed how it talked about girlhood and just in general how people came together to see it and dressed up in all pink and made it, made it this whole theater event. Uh, with watching it with Oppenheimer. So I myself actually watched both movies on the same day because my brother really wanted to see both of them and my parents wanted to see Oppenheimer. So we were just like, you know what? Might as well just do both of them on the same day. So he ended up wearing a Barbenheimer shirt and I dressed up in all pink and it was just so fun. And I really hope that there's going to, going to be more movie events like that in the future where people really just go all out when they go see a movie because I think that hasn't happened since like Twilight and The Hunger Games and stuff like that. Like people were lining up and like dressed up in like Twilight shirts and made it this whole big event. They watched like the marathon. So like I just want something like that and just bring back those movies. I want fun, interesting movies that people can go in and enjoy. Anyways, that's just my thoughts and rants about the movie. Uh, but yeah, for this spread, I did half semi-realistic characters and then the other half kind of like my style or more simplified. And I think I ended up liking more the right side of it, which has um, President Barbie, Ken, and Ellen on it. Specifically Ellen, I think his face turned out the way I kind of want to start drawing people from now on. It was a great experiment and again I'm working with markers here just to practice and yeah I think it became very successful. The right side, I mean. The left side is okay. I like the classic Barbie on that one. It. I just also love how it looks all together, like it's very like pink and colorful, which like I think it reflects the movie perfectly. I am skipping over to the very last spread here because I wanted to cover up the Barbie marker spread that was bleeding through onto this one and I knew I wanted to do a full illustration for both of like for it to cover both of the pages. So I wanted to do that first before I do this very last page, which you're gonna see at the very end. This was also another goal for this sketchbook is to do at least one big finished illustration in there because I tend to not really do works in my sketchbook that are completely done paintings and I really want to get into the habit of doing that because I think your sketchbook can also be used as like finished illustrations. I ended up doing this ghost piece um, 
where the ghost is kind of running through these clovers slash lily pads. I don't exactly know what these plants are because it's not really like an underwater scene or anything like that. So just big clovers. Or maybe the ghost is small. I don't know. I really like how the, the leaves ended up turning out. I think I just really like how vibrant the colors are and also the transparency of the ghost was very successful like i was very worried i'm not going to be able to create this effect uh but i was able to do that i do think i kind of kept the blue in the background which i'm not like a huge fan of like i think i should have done more of like a greenish background where it looked more of like he was in like a forest or something but i think i was just worried about adding another color onto it and taking away from the leaves because some of those leaves are really dark so i was worried that those are not gonna pop out if i added a darker color but overall i think it's pretty cute i'm very happy that i was able to do this because i really do think it's so cool when people open their sketchbook and there's like this huge illustration in their sketchbook and it's like a completed piece that they can like you know put on their portfolio or just like post it online like i really enjoy that and i definitely want to be able to do that in the future so this was a great practice for my future sketchbooks and moving forward this is definitely going to be a theme with my art And we finally reached the last spread, which I did a super simple landscape and flower drawings. So the top one, I was using pencils only, the same way I did that portrait. And I just really like this technique. Like, I think you can create such a soft look to your drawing because the pencil is like not very layered and i wasn't pushing down super hard i was just like putting the colors on there and i just really enjoyed the look of it so i definitely want to keep working on more pieces that look like that and then i also did this pencil and watercolor one and the little flowers were done with pentol signature pen and i really like the look of that pen and it's such like an easy like sketchbook pen to just like whip out and do little doodles with 
And also on the other side, I drew my star original character on the scalloped paper that I had lying around. I wanted to cover up the marker marks, but I also didn't want it to do another painting because I was kind of tired of painting in the sketchbook. Like again, this sketchbook just did not handle the water super well. And I was, I was done with it and also like, I was just tired and wanted to finish the sketchbook as soon as possible. I glued this page in and I really think it turned out cute and if you ever feel lazy just glue in some of your like drawings that you did in like another sketchbook or another piece of paper if you don't feel like working in your sketchbook. I, I think it's a really easy method to just like cover something up or not have too much of a, the pressure on like you ruining your sketchbook page because you're just gonna glue something in there so again there is no set rules for sketchbooking and you can do whatever you want with your sketchbook and i really do think like i did such like funky interesting things in this sketchbook because i did not really have this idea of what i wanted to do in there so i just did everything and i think that kind of worked out like that's kind of what sketchbooks are for is like for you to go crazy and wild with the materials that you're using and not really have anything look incredibly cohesive like all of the stuff in the sketchbook looks so different because i was experimenting with art styles and i was trying to find my voice in this sketchbook which i'm still looking for like i am still you know developing and working on my art style and it changes over the years and i really do think keeping a sketchbook is very helpful for that And with this, I finished the last page in the sketchbook and here's a little flip through for you with all of the pieces that I've done in the week and a half, which was not the time frame I set for myself, but in the end, the ultimate goal was to finish the sketchbook, which I ended up doing. And overall, I'm very proud of all the pages that I did and I pushed myself to work with a bunch of different materials and techniques. I applaud anyone who does this challenge because it's not easy, but at the same time, I think it's a great practice to get comfortable in your sketchbook. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video and let me know if you have ever done this challenge yourself. And a sketchbook tour is also coming very soon, so stay tuned for that if you want to see the rest of this sketchbook. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon.